I think one of the risks of the Lowe's card is that it can run into the Goldilocks problem. What's up guys, it's Sebastian from Ask Savvy Business, and today we're going to look at the Lowe's business card from American Express. As typical for this channel, we're going to look at the card using three different levels, the base of the card, comparing it to some other options, and then some other considerations that you might have. Big favorite before we dive in is to give this a thumbs up to help with the algorithm, and if you are someone new here, you want to maximize either your credit score, maybe some cash back for your business, or take some cool trips, then consider subscribing. So right off the bat, one of the perks is that you do get 5% cash back in the first six months on eligible purchases at Lowe's, and then after that, it's only 2%. So a reminder that this is only for new accounts, and I kind of think about this more as part of the intro bonus rather than a long-term perk of the card. If you have a lot of low spend in the next six months, then great, but I wouldn't rely on this long-term. And generally, I don't cover intro bonuses for these types of reviews, but I feel like if I don't mention it, then a lot of you will. I'd say one of the main draws of the card is that you do get 2% back at Lowe's in the long term, and this works whether you're in store or online at Lowe's.com or Lowe'sforpros.com. It is kind of interesting because if you compare it to personal cards, if you're comfortable using personal cards and then doing expenses afterwards, then 2% doesn't sound that good. But if you are only limited to business cards, then 2% is awesome. On the personal side, there's a lot of no annual fee cards that offer 2%. On the business side, it's more so 1.5%. You can get up to 2%, but there is an annual fee, and we'll cover that in part two. If you're someone that's a contractor or you own multiple properties and you need to shop at Lowe's a lot anyways, then this isn't too bad at all. One of the interesting things about the card is that you also get 2% cash back for a lot of other normal categories. This includes U.S. restaurants, U.S. office supply stores, and also wireless telephone services that are purchased directly from a U.S. service provider. I was actually kind of surprised by this because it doesn't sound that bad at all. Again, personal side, 2% doesn't move the needle. Business side, it's fine. There's a bunch of other perks as well, such as Lowe's Pro services. Benefits include discounted delivery, bulk rate pricing, and also a business replenishment program. I can't speak too much to this, so hopefully you guys can chime in, but it doesn't sound too bad. It seems fine. Outside of cash back, you also get 5% off for everyday purchases at Lowe's on eligible Lowe's purchases. If anything, I would argue that this is the superpower of the card and what makes it interesting for a lot of people. Main takeaway for this section is that I think it's a pretty solid card, especially if you shop at Lowe's. If you focus on the other 2% categories that aren't Lowe's, it's fine, but maybe if you do spend a lot, there are some better options. On that note, if you do want to learn about cards, whether it's this one or pretty much any other card out there, and you want to support the channel, we do have links on the website, AskSebi.com and down below in the description box. Make sure the links are competitive, but otherwise it's a huge way to support the channel. So thank you guys in advance. Okay, so for level two, what are some other cards that you might wanna consider if you are looking at this one? I think for a lot of people, it's going to be the Capital One Spark Cash Plus card where you get 2% back on everything and there's no cap on this and it's everything. So Lowe's, US restaurants, and everything else you would spend money on. The one catch or the one disadvantage is that there is a 150 annual fee there. In this case, it is a bit of a balancing act depending on how much you spend everywhere else. So if you do spend a lot on Lowe's, then obviously the Lowe's card is better because of the 2%, but also the 5% discount. If your low spending is relatively minimal though, then you might as well get this 2% card because it covers more ground, assuming you have decently high spend. On kind of the flip side, if you have lower spend, maybe if you only have one rental or you're kind of doing stuff more on the side, then it might not even make sense to get one dedicated card. So for example, if you go to Target, you can actually buy gift cards for Lowe's. Especially if you are comfortable using personal cards and then doing expenses afterwards, you could easily use the Chase Freedom Flex or Chase Freedom and buy gift cards during those specific categories for Lowe's when it's Target. So pretty much get 5% and arguably even more value and then just use the gift cards when you need to. And especially if it's not a lot, you can also consider the Target red card that also gets you 5% back. I think one of the risks of the Lowe's business card is that it does run into the Goldilocks problem. So if you spend a ton on other categories and there's better cards, if you don't spend that much, first off, probably doesn't make sense to get this card and there are also other options. It's not bad by any measure, but it only makes sense if you spend a ton specifically at Lowe's. And if anything, the question is whether the opportunity cost there is too high. This leads to level three, so looking at some other considerations that you might have. And for me, I think there's two that are on the top of my mind. The first one, and continuing the opportunity cost argument and discussion, is whether it warrants that roster spot. With American Express, you can generally either have four, five, or six credit cards, and this would take up one of those spots. For most people, they already have cards and they're kind of deciding which ones they want to add to their arsenal. So is this better than something like the Blue Business Plus, which is 2x MR points back on everything for the first $50,000 of spent per calendar year? If you're also considering personal cards because it does affect that, is this warranted the spot 
of taking up something like the Hilton Aspire or Bonvoy Brilliant. And in fact, a lot of people like to stack those cards because they're keeper cards that get you value above the annual fee. If you think about it, the question isn't whether it adds value, but whether it adds enough value. One example I think is funny because it's in the news right now is Dwight Howard. So even though he's a competent basketball player and most teams can probably sign him if they want to, the opportunity cost is that other team members, newer ones that are just joining the league, might not have the opportunity to develop. So even though he's fine, even though he's not detrimental to the team by itself, it is long-term detrimental. And in fact, that's probably why he ended up signing with Taiwan instead of with an NBA team. And maybe that changes when the playoffs come around, but for now, it's not really worth it for most teams. The second thing on my mind is going to be insurances and other protections. So you do get a lot of the baseline ones with American Express, but it's not the top of the line ones that you even get with some no annual fee cards. For this category, I generally use return protection as the measuring stick, and you get it on a lot of the cards that you would expect to. So for example, on the Army of Platinum cards, whether the business or a lot of the other co-branded ones. And of course, cards like the Centurion card, but even cards like the Blue Cash Preferred. Interestingly enough, you also see this on the Amazon and Amazon Prime, which are both no annual fee cards. Not the biggest deal by any means, but just know that there are some no annual fee cards within the American Express ecosystem that do have access to those better benefits. Main takeaway is that I think this card makes a lot of sense if you are someone that spends a ton of money at Lowe's, and that's going to consistently be the case. So for example, if you don't see yourself changing over to Home Depot and flip-flopping. The main draw is the no annual fee, the 2% back that you get there, as well as the 5% discount. If you spend a lot but it's not directly at Lowe's, then there might be some other cards that are a better fit. Again, if you want to learn about cards, we have links on the website, asksebi.com, and down below in the description box. If you made it to this point in the video, then leave a hammer emoji in the comments down below, and I'll try to harden and also respond. My question for you is, what are your thoughts on the Lowe's card? Is it something that makes sense for you? Is it a skip? And if you have had it, what's been your experience? Let me know and everyone else know in the comments down below. Big favor, give this a thumbs up, consider subscribing, but otherwise, hope you guys liked it. See you guys next time.